Today's travelog is Germany. So I went to Germany after I'd gone to Australia. Uh, it was actually a couple of years later. It was I changed jobs in the meantime, but it changed my perception of the flight across the Atlantic significantly. Whereas before, when I went to England, I thought it was a really long flight. And after having gone to Australia, I realized that it really wasn't a bad flight heading over there. Um, yeah, you know, so I flew into Munich and picked up a little Opel sedan from the airport and headed out. The town I was staying in was, I think, 30 or 40 miles south of Munich, out in the countryside. It was a little little town of, I think, seven or, th seven or so thousand people. And one of the interesting things about Germany is they're very strict in their zoning. And so you, I hit the city limits of, of Munich and all of a sudden I was in the country. They had no concept of suburbia like I'm used to here in the United States. Um, here you have a big urban center and you have a lot of suburban type of areas and the population density just kind of gradually falls off as, as you get further away from the urban areas. Whereas there it was like a, a, literally a line was drawn and half a mile made a huge difference between you're, you're in the city or you're in the countryside, which I thought was kind of interesting. But the same thing goes for all of Germany, and so the, the it's how it's scattered with little little tiny towns around with vast areas of undeveloped land and farming land between them, which is is actually kind of cool in in a lot of ways. Um, just kind of gives a, a much more rural atmosphere to to everything. So I was driving, got off the autobahn out of out of Munich to head towards the, the town I was staying in. And it was kind of funny because I'm driving th driving through this this countryside. It's kind of gent real gently rolling hills and a lot of wooded areas. And I'm driving ro along, come around a curve over a hill, and the first sign of the town that I'm staying in is, in is the familiar double arches of McDonald's, the bright yellow double arches. I, I just cracked up laughing when I saw that. It's like, okay, the first sign of this little quaint German town is is this mega American uh, restaurant chain. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny. Uh, but anyway, I got into town and, and got settled in. Business business stuff, work was just work, and worked throughout the week. Uh, got in Monday morning, and one of the first things I was told was, oh, by the way, Friday is a state holiday, so we're not working, uh, which was kind of cool. My company was, was really generous, and Scheduled, scheduled me to come back on Monday after my trip and gave me the weekend to kind of explore the countryside and have some personal time there. Uh, so, so now, instead of having a two-day weekend, as originally planned, I had a three-day weekend. So that, that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so f so during the week, I was just working in, the, in an office, no big deal. Friday, I started exploring the countryside. And because it was a, a state holiday, each little town had uh, a festival going on. And they had everybody was dressed up in kind of traditional costumes and a lot of street bands playing and performers, uh, kind of a festive atmosphere. Street street uh, vendors with food, traditional food, and uh, yeah, so it was kind of fun. I just kind of toured around, put in t into the old GPS system the next town that I was going to, and and drove and walked around for a little bit, and then went on to the next town. So it was kind of fun to explore and see the different cultures um, along the countryside. At the end of the day, I was actually quite a ways away from, from the hotel that I was staying at and got back on the Autobahn and just kind of cruised, cruised home. That was pretty fun. Um, really convinced me that our speed limits, at least out here in the, in the Western United States, are, are pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, enough said, I guess. Um, one thing that was, was kind of surprising on the Autobahn was... Um, I had a little Opel sedan that it maxed out. I was running it flat out, and top speed was like about 120 miles an hour or so. And I was had to stay in the slow lane because I was just getting run over by everybody else if I tried to try to be in the other lane. Um, a lot of vets, or a lot of yeah, a lot of vets was what was kind of surprising. Um, of course, there were a lot of Mercedes and BMWs that were kind of ex expected being right there in Germany. Um, but I was really surprised at the number of vets I saw, um, mostly late model ones, just kind of you know running flat out, almost 200 miles an hour probably. Um, that was pretty impressive. Um, Saturday I spent uh, going through the Alps. I was down there in southern Germany, so the Alps were were um, literally less than an hour away uh, the, up there on the Austrian border. 
And so I went down there and, and did a, did some hiking for a while and, and just drove around the country roads seeing, seeing the sights. And it was really impressive. The, the Alps, I you know, they, all, they have this uh, reputation of being so impressive. And I guess they are. When I, whenever I'd look at them on the map and stuff, the, you know, the Alps peaks are like 10,000 feet, which is, you know, here in Salt Lake City, we have, we have 10,000 peaks. I probably have six 10,000 peaks from my bedroom window here um, that I can see. So it's kind of not terribly impressive in terms of when I look at the numbers. What I didn't realize when, before I got there, was the valleys are at essentially sea level, at 50, less than 100 feet elevation, whereas the Alps, and there's no, there's no um, foothills between the valleys and the mountains. You just go right from the mountain, to, from the valley to the mountain, and you go from sea level, and then you have mountains that have 10,000 foot elevations right there. And that's what makes them so impressive. Here in Salt Lake, yeah, we have we have mountains at the same elevation, but Salt Lake City is at 4,000 feet. So the the relative difference between the valley floor and the mountain peaks is what makes the Alps just so so massively impressive. And they are impressive. Um, hiking around, I, one thing I found kind of interesting was the the vegetation was very much a monoculture. Um, as I was hiking, you know, it's kind of a foresty area, and from the um, parking lot at the trailhead up to a certain elevation, there was like one kind of forest undergrowth. You had the trees and you had the forest floor. And the forest floor, there was just the same plant for as far as you could see. It was almost park-like in a lot of ways. Um, and then I get got to a certain elevation, all of a sudden there was a different, a different um, plant life under the, under, on the floor, but the trees were the same. And until and it was that way until I got to alpine level and the trees just disappeared. And I thought that was kind of surprising that there was really such a, a lack of diversity in in the, the flora that I saw there. Um, the other thing too was was there was really very little um, evidence of of animal life. I mean, there were kind of insects and and birds, but there's no no evidence of of anything larger. Um, you know, here I'm used to to seeing all kinds of evidence of, of deer and elk and and antelope and you know, squirrels and chipmunks and and you know you name it. There's all kinds of you see you see um, animals as you're as you're hiking around here, and to have zero evidence of animals was was really surprising to me. I'm not quite sure what the why that is that, but um, it was something I I observed. Uh, another, another interesting thing in driving around was there's a lot of motorcycles, a lot of motorcycles, and the way drivers um, deal with them are, is very courteous. Um, get, we'd get up to a stoplight and everybody, you know, say you have two, two lanes coming up to a stoplight, everybody in the right-hand lane would pull, all, pull to the right side of their lane and everybody in the left lane would pull to the left side of their lane so they're, to leave the center uh, section much wider than, than nor would normally be available. And all the motorcycles are just lane split down the middle to go up to the, to the red light so they could take off in front of traffic. And which was kind of interesting because it was kind of a cultural thing. Everybody just did that when they came to a stoplight to give motorcycles the, the right of way through the center, uh, which was re really cool to see that as a motorcycle rider. Uh, it was nice to see that the, the drivers were uh, paying attention to the motorcyclists on the road. And apparently, lane splitting there is is legal or accepted anyway, because uh, they lane split all the time under any condition. Uh, in fact, in one case, I thought the motorcyclist was a little crazy. As a motorcyclist myself, I thought I was on this windy mountain road, blind corners. Uh, you know, it was like a twenty mile an hour turn, and here comes this motorcycle is passing me on this blind curve, and I'm going. Uh, <laughs> what happens if there's a car coming from the other direction? But apparently that's kind of normal practice there, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and, and kind of the, the other funny thing is my German ancestry must, must have shown through because I must have been asked probably three times for directions. <laughs> and, you know, I had one guy that got kind of upset when he realized I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know where I was. Um, but the other funny thing was I was actually able to help somebody. Uh, a French lady and her daughter 
flagged me down in the parking lot at the trailhead. Um, I was heading back my for my hike, and uh, I was actually able to help them because they had a map, and it was just basic map reading for they they didn't know where they were or how to get there, but they had a map, and so I was able to show them where they were on the map and how that related to where we were, and uh, how to get where they needed to go. So that was that was kind of funny. I think that's about it for my uh, highlights of my Germany trip. Until tomorrow, go make something. Perfection's not required. Fun is.